you know, I've, I've really enjoyed my time with, with Marcus, you know, he and I, our paths have crossed quite often in, in recruiting at other schools and hadn't had a chance to build a relationship with him. Um, and from day one, it's been awesome. You know, it's uh, the, the one thing that I'll tell you is that he's a tiger and I love that. I love working with other coaches that, that attack in the recruiting cycle and, and, and build relationships and, and challenge me as a, as a position coach to do the same. And, you know, at the end of every cycle, you're, you're talking about, you know, where you can always get better and improve. And, you know, for me, you know, I'm always trying to, to look inward to find out how I can improve and, and, and watching him build relationships and communicate and collaboration with the staff. That's been really fun. And, um, you know, I'd say energy and just the way he attacks it. This is, um, you know, something that we've, we, we've uh, really enjoyed and that I've enjoyed and, and that I've learned from. You get, yeah, so the two recruits. Let me just touch on really the, the D linemen in general and then kind of leave it at that. So starting inside, Gabriel Rubio, who I built a relationship back when he was a freshman. Uh, very, very excited for him. You know, comes from a family of football. And, and Gabriel, is, or An and Angel, his father, who's the defensive line coach there at the high school, a, a fireman. And um, just phenomenal family, um, work ethic through the roof. Gabriel's the most respectful young man you could ever recruit and, um, and coach. I gave Gabriel a, um, uh, you know, I gave him a challenge of, we gave him a challenge of, we need to see your academics go up before we can offer you a scholarship. And it was a risk that we took because, you know, Gabriel was getting, you know, 15, 20 offers from, you know, top, top 10 programs. And, and uh, he held steadfast to what he was looking for and, and, um, you know, once he got his GPA up to where we needed it to be, we offered him a scholarship and he turned around and he committed. And, he, and, and so, you know, building an incredible connection with him and his family and super excited for where he's coming and, and thankful that he's here this spring. Uh, the next young man would be Jason Anye. He jumped in next and, and Jason is going to be a big end for us. And right now he's, you know, 275, 280 pounds. He's going to be a, a huge end, as we call it right now. And, but he gives us some good position flexibility. Maybe he goes in and plays some three technique, uh, but we're excited for Jason's development. He's super tall, long and athletic and uh, twitchy enough to give us great pass rush. So, you know, he's gonna be on the edge to start and, and see how he goes, uh, but he's not here this spring. And then the next young man that jumped in was Will Schweitzer. You know, he's gonna be a Viper. We're excited for him. You know, he's, he's, he's long, he's, he's tall, he's, um, you know, an incredible worker. He's played linebacker, so he's got coverage ability, which we're excited about for that Viper position. And then, um, you know, you got Devin Apu. So Devin was the, the last to jump on board and, and super excited for him. You know, same as Will, you know, a very long athletic player that's played in a two-point stance. You know, the, the great thing about Devin is that he's a, he's a football junkie. You know, when we talked during the recruiting process, it wasn't about the glitz and the glamour, he wanted to talk football. You know, he wanted to know, hey, why is Dalen in a, in a two-point stance with his outside foot up and his inside foot back? You know, I think I'll feel more comfortable with my inside foot up, you know? And then, you know, I see you're playing three, three Vipers, you know, they're moving all over the place. What are you telling him when he's over the guard? You know, he's just a football junkie, which I'm excited about. You know?